Okay, hey guys, it's uh, good to talk to you all again. And today we're going to be talking about dividing into fractional parts. And uh, let's look at our lesson objective for the day. And our lesson objective is... Three point three e, and that's solve problems involving partitioning an object or set of objects among two or more recipients using pictorial rep representation of fractions with denominators of two, three, four, six, and eight. And uh, what we want to be able to do by the end of the lesson is I can use fractions to name parts of an object, and I can identify and represent improper fractions and mixed numbers. So uh, we have some uh, vocabulary we're going to look at over here. And then uh, in the I can statement, we talked about um, improper fractions and mixed numbers. So uh, we're going to talk about what those are. Uh, so proper fractions is how, how we normally think about a fraction. That's where uh, the numerator is smaller than the denominator. So like 1 half, 3 fourths, 5 six. 11 twentieths or 21 twenty-fifths. So in all those, the numerator is smaller than the denominator. So uh, here's a picture of a proper fraction and five six. So we have six part total parts and five of them are shaded green. Uh, let's look at improper fraction. Okay, in an improper fraction, the numerator is equal or greater than the denominator. So like 10 tenths is equal or uh, is greater, like 3 halves, 7 fourths, 6 fifths, uh, 15 elevenths, or 10 tenths, like we uh, mentioned uh, initially. Scoot up a little bit here. Okay, uh, and here's a model of an improper fraction, 8 sixths. You can see that we have um, our denominator, which is uh, our, our whole is broken down into 1, 2, 3, four, five, six parts. So that makes our denominator. And out of those, uh, we have six, seven, eight that are shaded. So that represents eight, six. Uh, and whenever we're talking, whenever we uh, see an improper fraction, we're always going to be talking about at least one whole. So let's go look at mixed numbers. Okay. Uh, or mixed fractions is what they call here. Uh, it consists of a whole number and a proper fraction. So one and a half, two and three fourths, five and five sixths. Or down here we have one and two sixths. And uh, it's really, you see, look at these models, that eight sixths and two sixths look the same. Because uh, they are, because eight sixths and two sixths are equal. Okay, because I have one whole right here and two sixths. So that represents one and two sixths. Um, got some other models we're going to look at real quick. We're going to use the same model, and we're going to talk about it as a mixed number, and we're also going to talk about it as, as an uh, improper fraction. So over here, I see one and a half, and we can also call one and a half three halves because there are one, two, three halves. The whole is broken down into two equal pieces, and uh, I have more than one whole, so I have three halves. The next one I'm going to look at is one and three fourths or seven fourths, and the whole is broken into one, two, three, four parts, which represents our denominator. And it looks like I have four, five, six, seven total parts. That's how I get my improper fraction. So both of these are equal. One and three fourths is equal to seven fourths, and just like one and a half is equal to three halves. Uh, let's look at the next one. I have two and a fourth or nine fourths. So my whole is broken into four equal parts. So that's one, two, three, four. And that makes my denominator of four. And I have a total of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine parts. And that's how I get my improper fraction, nine fourths. And uh, the last one I'm going to look at is two and three eighths or 19 eighths. So we'll look at it. My whole is broken down into eight equal, eight, eight equal parts, it looks like. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven and eight parts right there, which is my denominator of eight. I'll draw it there. Denominator of eight for 19 eighths and two and three eighths. So, uh, but I have a total of eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 total parts. That's how I get 19 eighths. So uh, I've got a video real quick, a Pearson video, and it's, uh, it's talking about uh, the 3.3e the fractions where we're uh, dividing uh, into uh, dividing uh, something into a fractional parts. So let's get ready and watch it. How can you share items equally? Sharing equally means everyone gets the same amount. Think about this question during the lesson. Amanda, Linda, and Anita purchased two burritos. If they share the burritos equally, what fraction of the burritos will each friend get? I'm getting hungry for a fraction of a burrito just thinking about it. What operation should be used to find the fraction of a burrito that each will get? You can divide to find a fraction of the total. How are fractions and division related? A fraction expresses the number of parts with a particular characteristic divided by the total number of parts. Step 1. Think about sharing two burritos among three friends. How many burritos will be shared equally by the friends? There are two burritos that the friends will share. How many friends will share the burritos? There are three friends that will share the burritos. What picture could you draw to help find the fraction of burritos per friend? You could divide each burrito into three equal parts. Each part is one divided by three or one third. Step two, the parts are shared equally. So how much will each friend get? You can write division as a fraction. So two divided by three equals two thirds. Each friend gets one part from each burrito for a total of two one third parts. This is the same as two thirds of one burrito. What do the two and the three represent in two-thirds. The three represents the number of equal parts in one burrito. The two represents the number of parts each friend receives. Each friend will get two-thirds of a burrito. Now you know how to share items equally. Okay, uh, got a couple of example problems here we're going to do uh, for partitioning uh, things into fractional parts. So the first question says, Rebecca, Rebecca baked a pan of lasagna. If she wants to share the lasagna with a friend, uh, what fractional amount of the lasagna will each person receive? So we've got um, important information in this question right here is we have Rebecca and uh, she has a friend and uh, she wants to share uh, the, the uh, she wants to share the lasagna. So, um, the question is, what fractional amount of the lasagna will each person receive? Okay, well, I've got one lasagna and I've got two friends. I want to share it. So it sounds like I'm going to have to cut it into two equal parts. So I go ahead. I've got the pan of lasagna right here. And I'm going to cut it kind of down here to make uh, two equal parts. And uh, the lasagna itself represents one the whole lasagna. And uh, this will represent one half the lasagna, and this would represent uh, the other half of lasagna. So this would be what uh, Rebecca got, and this would be what our friend got. So each person, uh, the fractional part of the lasagna that each person would get uh, would be one half. That's a pretty simple problem right there. So let's go ahead and look at another problem. Uh, sounds like uh, it's Rebecca again, so let's uh, read about her. It says, Rebecca 
baked a pan of lasagna. If she wants to share lasagna with seven friends, what fractional amount of lasagna will each person receive? So we've got Rebecca again, and she has seven friends now. And what we want to do is figure out what fractional amount of lasagna will each person receive. We'll box this in each. We didn't box it in last time, but each that's uh, that's telling us we're, we want to make equal groups. So we have Rebecca, which is one person, and then her seven friends. So that sounds like uh, we need to go ahead and do one plus seven, and one plus seven equals eight. So it sounds like we want to uh, divide this lasagna and make uh, eight equal groups of it. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead. First, I'll cut it in half, and that will give me two equal parts, just like we did before when she just had one friend. If I cut each one of those halves in half, that'll give us four equal parts. If I want eight equal parts, I cut uh, all that in, in half. That should give me eight equal parts there. So um, it looks like uh, Rebecca, this would be Rebecca's, we'll say this is Rebecca's part. This is her first friend's part, her second friend's part, third friend, fourth friend, fifth friend, sixth friend, and seventh friend. So it looks like uh, there's eight total parts there. And uh, each one is going to get one of them. So everybody's going to get one eighth of the lasagna. Uh, label each portion there. So it looks like each person's going to get one eighth of the lasagna. Let's look at the next problem. Okay, on this problem it says Mrs. Garcia has three cakes left over from the bake sale. She wants to share the cakes equally among four friends. What fractional amount of the cake will each friend receive? So it looks like we have three cakes and she wants to share with four of the friends. Okay, and this one right here, uh, she's giving them to four friends. It's not, she's not sharing them with herself and four people. So um, we're going to go ahead and share these uh, three cakes with four people. And the uh, easiest way to do that is go ahead and we'll cut the cakes into fourths. So we cut that cake into fourths. Cut this cake into fourths. We cut this cake into fourths, and we just go ahead and number them. So we'll give this to person one, person two, person three, and person four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So if we want to figure uh, what fractional amount will each friend receive, so. We know that we cut the cake into fourths, so the denominator is going to be four. And of those fourths, uh, it looks like each person, let's look at person one. Looks like person one got one, two, three pieces. So that means each person's going to get three fourths of the cake. So each person's going to get three fourths of a cake. Okay, let's look down here. So, we got Mrs. Garcia has four cakes left over from the bake sale. So she got more cakes this time. And she wants to share the cakes equally among three friends. So what fractional amount of cake will each friend receive? So uh, we're going to do this one a couple different ways. Okay, uh, first way we're going to do it is uh, I've got four cakes. You can see my four cakes right there. And I've got three friends. So I know that each friend could get at least one whole cake. So we'll say um, friend one is going to get this one. Friend two is going to get this one. And friend three is going to get this one. And we still have one left over. So since there's three people, we can go ahead and divide it into thirds, three equal parts. So we cut the cake like this. So friend one would get that one, friend two would get that one, and friend three would get that one. Okay, so it looks like, let's go ahead and look at friend one. 
Okay, friend one's going to get one whole cake. One whole cake. And one part of three, which would be one third. So it looks like uh, each friend could get one and one third. So we can go ahead and do this as an improper fraction too. So what we'll end up doing is we'll do, we'll go ahead and separate each cake into thirds since there's three friends. Just another way of doing the same problem. So friend one, so we're not using these anymore. So we give one piece to uh, first person, piece to the second person, piece to third person. First, second, third, first, second, third. In this scenario, we still have it broken into uh, three, the whole is broken into three equal pieces. So friend one would get one, two, three, four pieces of a cut that's cut into, of a cake that's cut into three pieces. So each friend could get four thirds. So four thirds and one and one third are equivalent fractions or equal, same amount, but just two different ways of doing the same problem. Okay, we've got a guided practice problem we're gonna work on here. It says, Carl and three friends share a strip of star stickers. What sentence is true about the stickers Carl shares? So, um, we need to go and break this problem apart. Um, first thing, uh, how many uh, people are going to be sharing the stickers? Yeah, that's right. It looks like it's Carl and three friends. So that's four people. How many stickers are they going to be sharing? Yeah, that's correct. It looks like I counted them. There's eight stars right there. So they're going to be sharing eight stars stickers. Box in some operational clues right here. Uh, they're going to be sharing. And I'll underline the sentence is uh, what, or the question, what sentence is true about these stickers Carl shares? So um, it looks like they're going to be sharing them. So uh, I think that's going to be a uh, equal groups. They're going to share them equally. So I'm going to write my get strategy. So do I know how many groups there are? Yeah, that's right. The groups are going to be the, the four friends. Okay, do we know how many are in each group? That's correct. We're trying to find out how many are in each group. So we're trying to figure out how many stars each uh, of the Carl and his friends are going to get. Do we know the total? Yeah, we know the total. There's eight stars total. So what operation am I going to use to solve this? Yeah, that's correct. If I know the total, it's going to be a division problem, and that's uh, going to be 8 divided by 4. When you figure out uh, how many stars each student or each, uh, each of his friends are going to get. So whenever I know the groups, it, always the easiest way to do it is going to be uh, grouping. That's something we would have done in second grade. And we're going to share them equally. And I'm going to do the four circles, and the four circles are going to represent the Carl and his four friends. So, and I'll just go ahead and start sharing the stars equally. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I shared them all equally, and I can see that each one's going to get two. I also know that four times two equals eight. So uh, I know that uh, each one will get two. Okay, uh, there's another way to solve this, though. We can go ahead and represent uh, the stars that uh, each, uh, each of them will get as a fraction. Okay, and uh, that would, uh, so basically, it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense on, in this type of problem, but uh, they are, this, uh, this teak is uh, representing um, fractional parts of a, of a, a set of stuff. So uh, we could go ahead and separate each one into fourths, and that's not exactly fourths, but uh, I don't believe there's two lines of symmetry there, so. But we'll just pretend that I separate those stars into four equal parts, and so each one we're gonna give 
one part of it to one of the friends. So that's Carl and uh, his one, two, three friends there. And I do that on all eight of the stars. So uh, since I went ahead and separated the whole into four equal parts, that means my denominator would be four. And then each one, uh, each person would get one fourth of it. And since there's eight stars, that would be eight fourths. So uh, when we look at the answer choices, uh, I've only got one answer choice that shows each one getting two stickers or eight fourths of a sticker. And those are equivalent. Okay, and if I was to write two as a fraction, I could write two over one. But eight fourths is equal to two holes or two over one. So the correct answer for this one would be answer choice A. Okay, if you was uh, if you wasn't really paying close attention that Carl is taking part in sharing the stickers, you might have chose uh, something like this one right here. Uh, eight eight thirds, because uh, if you broke in, broke each star into three equal pieces, that would have been uh, what you would have got. Uh, but uh, A is the correct answer on this problem. Okay, the next problem says, Rich, David, and Steve equally share a cherry pie. What fraction of the pie does each boy receive? So, uh, how many people are sharing the pie? Yep, that's correct. There are three people sharing the pie. So they share it equally. I'll box that in. So what fraction of the pie does each boy receive? So we know they're going to receive the same amount. So um, we would go ahead and just go ahead and separate the pie into three equal pieces. So if I separate the pie into three equal pieces, it might look sort of like this. So that means that Rich might get this part, David might get this part, and Stephen might get this part. So what would the denominator be for the the amount that each boy receives. Yeah, that's correct. It would be three, would be my denominator. And each boy would receive one section of that, so one third. So it looks like uh, they would have received, would have got uh, answer choice D is our correct answer. Let's go ahead and look at the next problem. Okay, and this problem says Sawyer divides a graham cracker, cracker equally with a friend. What portion of the graham cracker does Sawyer get? So, um, how many people are going to be sharing this cracker? That's correct. It looks like Sawyer is sharing it with a friend. So that's two people are sharing it. So, what portion of the graham cracker does Sawyer get? So if he sh shares it uh, with his friend, I would say that we would cut it in half, right? Okay, but when I look at the answer choices, I don't see uh, one half as one of the answer choices. But it does look like that uh, the, the cracker is broken into four equal parts. So I think Sawyer would probably get this and his friend would get this part. So how many parts does Sawyer get? Yes, that's true. Sawyer's going to get two parts. How many parts are there total? Yeah, that's correct. There's two parts total. So that means that Sawyer would get two-fourths of the cracker. But by the way, two-fourths is equal to one-half. Okay, it's time to go ahead and complete your independent work now. Uh, there'll be a Schoology assignment uh, with today's date on there, and it'll be uh, after this video. And I'll also put a PDF in there. It'll allow you to, uh, to print out the work and do it uh, pencil and paper. So I think uh, typically third graders are going to do a little bit better if they're working on a piece of paper. But just make sure you remember to input the assignment at Schoology. And if you have any questions, please email your teacher or send them a message on Schoology and uh, take your time, do your best.